Within decades, the world has armed itself to the brink of complete annihilation. In the Second World War, bomber fleets can set whole cities ablaze within minutes. Planes carpet bomb large swathes of land, dropping enormous amounts of ordnance in the process. After the war ends, millions of tons of munitions become unusable from one day to the next. It is the largest overproduction in history. On Canada's eastern seaboard, off the coast of Nova Scotia, lies one of the main ocean routes between Europe and North America. This gives the region great importance for the military, especially during the World Wars. Here, warships were once loaded with arms from giant munitions arsenals. Right now we're at Rent Point in the Bedford Basin in Halifax. Uh, in July 26, uh, 1945, Canada had the third largest navy in the world. They were coming back from the Second World War and they were offloading all the munitions here at the basin. So what we have here today is the basin is just full of munitions. All, all the land sites are full of munitions as well. Ammunition storage after World War II found little support among the population. Here at Bedford Bay in Halifax, there had already been an enormous explosion during the First World War. After another major incident occurred in 1945, something had to happen. The idea here is just to get a better understanding of what type of munitions are on the bottom, how many are there, what kind of state they're in, and then from then we can actually look at the different information and determine what needs to be done. After World War II was over, the military had to find a solution for its dangerous old ordnance, and it found one right in front of its nose. When these munitions corrode and the casing comes off them, in a lot of them you're left with stuff like TNT, high explosive, which is a carcinogen. So now you have that carcinogen laying on the bottom of the ocean, which will continually put stuff into the environment like that for the next thousand years. The pollutants spread in the marine ecosystem and endanger marine life along with the people who rely on the ocean for food. It's personal to me because I come from Cape Breton and we are basically a marine community that rely on our mainstay from the ocean. We eat the fish from there, and we do have a high cancer rate here, right across the province in Nova Scotia. Terry Long was an explosives expert in the Canadian military. He has removed and defused thousands of mines. His expertise is sought after all over the world. Long spends more than two decades in crisis zones. Eventually, the risk becomes too much for him. After he returns to Canada, he seeks out less dangerous work. He finds a job exploring ocean floors for oil firms, yet soon his past catches up with him. He discovers hundreds of munition sites at the bottom of the ocean. So all these different dots you're seeing along here are actual munition sites, which are full of munitions or shipwrecks that contain munitions.
There's approximately 3,000 documented sites. Now these are the ones that we actually looked at and documented, but we believe we only found half of them. We still believe there's another 3,000 out there. Terry Long estimates that as many as one million tons of munitions were dumped off the coast of Nova Scotia. Finding them isn't easy. Only a portion of the dumping sites were documented, and it is not always certain what the munitions contain. It is a problem that is well known in Europe. On September the 1st, 1939, the Second World War began here at the Bay of Gdansk. Today, Polish scientists are searching for chemical weapons. There is no recorded information about their exact whereabouts. Accordingly, scientists must use sonar to scour the ocean floor meter by meter. For several years now, similar time-consuming searches have been taking place throughout the Baltic Sea. A complete sweep of the Bay of Gdansk alone will take decades. It's like looking for a needle in a haystack. Every time something suspicious appears, the ship stops and scientists investigate the spot with a camera submarine. You can see there is no bacteria around, but it's black. It should be white. So it could be that you've got contamination of this area and bacteria is not growing. Scientists are not certain about the effects of the chemical agents on the sensitive marine ecosystem. Samples taken of the sediment will later show that toxic compounds have already leached into the ocean floor. One of the alarming news we received estimating the rate of corrosion. There should be a corrosion maximum releasing the toxins to environment about 60 years past the World War II era for bombs and uh, something like 110 for artillery shells. So, as for the bombs, it's about now. The study of the impending catastrophe has just begun, but early findings have brought disturbing news. Animals that live in areas close to dumping sites have alarmingly high rates of fatal disease. The ocean is a continuum. Uh, if you put something there, even at great depths, it will eventually find a way to hit you in the back. There's enough cyanide, adamsite, mustard gas and taboon in the oceans off the coast of Europe to obliterate all life on Earth. Between Ireland and Scotland, 250,000 tonnes of chemical weapons are rotting away in a gigantic dump. 150,000 tonnes of weapons were dumped in the Barents Sea and the Kara Sea. It's a ticking global time bomb. Scientists believe that toxic chemicals off Canada's eastern seaboard have already made their way into the food chain. The effects on the people who eat the local seafood have yet to be studied. Terry Long's investigations turn up something else. He traveled to Washington to find out exactly where munitions were dumped. In the archive of the Pentagon, he stumbled upon documents that he believes he was not meant to see. The documents were open to me. I was allowed to go through the archives. There was one in particular that showed 30 tons of special weapons, which is the U.S. designator for nuclear weapons, uh, leaving the port of Virginia and being dumped somewhere on the way to Nova Scotia. What happens now with it? Nothing.
Kerry Long copied the logbook of the ship that did the dumping. Authorities at the Pentagon are shocked when they find out which documents he has uncovered. 1246 mustered all dumping team. 1253 commenced dumping of special weapons. 1315 completed dumping, offloaded 30 tons of special weapons. I just simply copied the documents and took them. And then what happened? Uh, I'm, I, when I got it, uh, I, I can't say this on film. Yeah, yeah, I can't say that, no. I, I can't say that anything more than what I just said. 